Welcome to the second part of this series about my top 10 features of DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. In this video compilation, I'll show you 10 amazing features that you probably don't even know about what DaVinci Resolve on the iPad is capable. I'm Daniel and on this channel, it's all about DaVinci Resolve on the iPad and Final Cut Pro on the iPad. We have a community about DaVinci Resolve. So there's a Discord and a Facebook group. Definitely check out the group. So let's jump straight into the video. Today, I will show you how you can do ripple trim delete forward and backward in DaVinci Resolve for your iPad. Open the shortcuts menu with Option, Command and K. And now here under Trim, go down to Ripple. And if you scroll down here, you will find two options, End to Playhead and Start to Playhead. Give those two a shortcut. I have W and Q. Close. So I'll give you an example. If my Playhead is here and I want to delete everything that is here on the left until my next cut, I only have to press one keyboard shortcut. And for me, that's Q. Bam, it's gone. Or for example, let's say you have a cut here and everything from the playhead to the front, I want to delete now. I only have to hit W. Hey guys, in this video, I will show you how you can use the voice isolation if you have background noise. In DaVinci Resolve, we have voice isolation and you can activate voice isolation when you go into the inspector and there you will find voice isolation. And you have to just click it and the neural engine will figure it out. And now from now on, this is the neural engine taking it off and you don't hear as much and you can focus more on my voice. Hey guys, in this video, I will show you a very fast way how you can change the standard transition time. What I'm talking about is this one here. So if you're here in DaVinci Resolve for the iPad and you change this one, this is the duration. But you can also change this so by default so that when you drag a transition into your clip that this time is changed. And how this works is now if you click the transition and you go to the inspector and you see now this new button here since the 18.5 update it's called set default transition so you now see it's one second so i can now increase this let's say two second set default transition so if i now delete this one here and i get a new transition in like this one and now you see it has already the new adjusted time. In this video, I will show you a very simple way how you can improve your transitions in DaVinci Resolve for the iPad. Doesn't matter which transition, with this simple hack, you can make every transition just look better. So you click any transition here in your timeline and then you go to the inspector. And when you are here in the transitions, if you scroll down, you can actually give it an ease in or an ease out. So like here, ease in, ease in, out. And if you now hit play, the in point and the out point will be with a little bit more softness to it and it will just look so much better. And you can do this with every transition. In this video, I show you how you can add a simple timer in DaVinci Resolve for the iPad. So we go to titles and now we select the custom title. We drag this to our timeline and here we open now the inspector for the title. And if you now highlight here the text and right click on this on this area somewhere here, right click and then you can say here time code. And now you see we transform that to the time code. And if we play now our clip, you can see now that it's counting the milliseconds, the seconds, minutes and hours. And if you don't want to see that many, you can scroll down here to this one here, right on. If I go to the left side, I can now delete the hours, the minutes. Now this, for example, would be the milliseconds and the minutes. So if we go to the beginning, milliseconds, seconds. And if I don't want to see this on the right, I can pull this one from the right. Now this is only the seconds. One, two. If we also want to see the minutes, I go back in here like this. One, two, three. This is how you can do a simple timer in DaVinci Resolve for the iPad. There are so many features that you can use with DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. We have a desktop-like software here on the iPad. DaVinci Resolve is one of the number one Hollywood software. So many, many Hollywood movies are actually made in DaVinci Resolve, color graded in DaVinci Resolve, and we have most of these features here on the iPad. I created a masterclass from beginner to pro about DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. So if you really want to learn and get the next level, and if you want to be serious about it, then this masterclass is designed for you. We cover all the basics if you're a total beginner, but I bring you also to the advanced techniques so that you can create amazing videos for your YouTube, for your videos, for your Instagram, for whatever you like. So definitely check out the link in the description. In this video today, I will show you two ways how you can color grade a complete timeline in DaVinci Resolve for the iPad. So the first way is the classical one. If you come from Premiere Pro or a different editing project, you come here into the edit page and you say adjustment clip here under effects. I can drop my adjustment clip and put it over top of all of my clips and I can 
and select this and come into my color page. And now I can only color grade that adjustment clip. So everything that is under my adjustment clip will be affected. But you don't have to do this in DaVinci Resolve. I can actually delete this adjustment clip and I can come to my color tab because when you come here to the top, this icon, you can toggle between clips. This is what you're used to have. So I can now color correct all of my individual clips. And then of course I could copy my color grade or I can come in here and say timeline. And now when I do any color correction here, I will always affect the complete timeline. Guys, you don't really understand how powerful this new transcribe audio feature in DaVinci Resolve for iPad and desktop even is. I mean, and I say that because it's so powerful that we have this now even on an iPad not just on the desktop version. What am I talking about? A couple of days ago, I showed you one of the new functions of 18.5 transcribe audio. So for example, you have a clip and you can right click transcribe audio. And then you basically, it, the very first time it will run through the process will transcribe your audio and you can use this feature to create subtitles, to create all different types of things from the audio or video that you have inside of your DaVinci Resolve. So what do I mean by that? Why is this so powerful? And why am I making a second video about this? Guys, if you go in here, I showed you already that you can now even select parts in this transcribe audio and put it onto your timeline. But there is an even powerful, more powerful feature that I totally forgot to show you. We have a search function. So I can search for whatever wo word I want in my text and of course it doesn't find it. Why? Change. Uh, I think I, I didn't say change. Uh, change. Let's say change. And it finds it. And if I double tap here, it starts talking here in the video. So imagine you have a program that gives you all the transcription of your video or audio. You can make subtitles. Oh yeah, I showed you this one too, because the very first time when I showed you this, I used shortcuts in the edit page. And in the edit page, there is nothing to make those subtitles, right? But if you're here in the cut page, you can just come in here and then you can create subtitles from audio, what everything is it. So how it works is you finish your video in the timeline, and then you can just basically go in here, create subtitles from this video. But the most important thing I wanna show you today really is this, Transcribe audio again. You can have, let's say you have a documentary. You, you recorded a complete, like a seminar, 10 hours of footage. And you know that the speaker was talking about a certain type of topic, but now you don't have to go into the video and search for it. You can use the search function here and type it in and you will find it. With the marker, you can mark different areas. And if I hit play, for example, it has a new update version 18. It will show you every word what I'm saying in the video, but now comes the cool part. I can use my pencil and let's mark, for example, let's say here from now until let's say here. And I want that exactly this part is in my timeline. So I can now say here with my mouse or my pencil and click this one. And now only this part is now in my timeline. Today, I will show you two ways how you can remove a green screen in DaVinci Resolve for your iPad. For solution number one, you need the edit page. And for solution number two, you need the fusion page. If you don't have those pages, I made a video how you can unlock them even without a keyboard on your iPad DaVinci Resolve. I copy a link in the description. Let's start with the edit page. Go to effects. And here under effects, you can scroll down to open effects. And here under open effects, go to resolve FX key and use the 3D key and drag it to your clip. I will show you something later here. That's why I'm using two now at the moment. The first clip is just a simple green screen. So go to inspector and change to effects. And here you see now the open effects that we added. And the difference between the iPad version and the, the desktop version is usually you just click here the picker. Oh yeah, before you can do this with the picker, you have to change this longer press here and go to open FX overlay. And now you can draw in where your color, your green, your, your chroma key is. You use this one here. But what you will notice now on the iPad version at the same time while I'm drawing, I'm also moving. The workaround is that you use the minus and the plus pickers and just hit point by point. I will show you this later. Oh, let's, let's just move into this one. Just so you see here, oops, let's go back. Here the same thing, you can draw in and you have a green area here as well. So you can just hit the plus icon here. Sometimes it's recognized or sometimes not. What you can do if it's hard, because let's say you have different shades of green, what you usually have, you can scroll down here and then under output, go to alpha highlight black and white. And now under matte fineness, fineness, however I pronounce that, 
you find clean black and you can increase the value of clean black and you see now how the screen big so if we go back here to final compose we see the greens the black screen here but we still have some green dots and the the corners and how you can change that is it's called spilling over <laughs> not spilling over but uh, despill yeah, actually it's spilling over <laughs> so the green is spilling over to the edge and you can remove this here on the behavior options and you can change the value from the spill and if you increase this the green will gone will be gone i already put something on the background so if we now hit play this one is working now and if we unlock this one and see that one we still have the green line for this one here so i go in here do the same the spill for my eagle and you see how the green lines are disappearing and this is version one solution number two let's go to the fusion page and here on the fusion page click this one and if you have the keyboard you can actually hit shift and space and this little tool will come up and you can you can look for delta if you don't have a keyboard then let's just cancel this one you can go here to effects and you can also hit here and search for Delta as well Check. and you can just apply that one so if you are in Delta let's close not the notes let's close the effects so if you are here on the Delta what you can do now is you can select a background color here so here I can use the picker and go for my green boom done and you already see that it's cutting out this one and if you have the same problem like before if it's like a shade of green what you can do is you can change here to mate and you can change the threshold for the beginning and bring it in and also for the highlights and bring it in and this should usually clean up the image pretty well and let's just activate this clip here and if you see now we have the same result like in option one. In this video, I will show you how you can export or render transparent backgrounds, so the alpha channel in DaVinci Resolve for your iPad. A couple of days ago, I made a tutorial showing you how you can remove those green screens. I have the same clip now in here, and you can see I removed the green screen from this eagle. What I want to do now is I hide this one, so I only have my clip with the transparent background. In the delivery page, we go here to custom, and we have the format and by the way there are many ways how you can export a transparent background video this is now the way that i found is working on the ipad right now so keep this on quick time then here instead of h264 select gopro cineform also change this one here to rgb 16 bits and then for whatever reason it doesn't show you the setting for alpha channel but if you change it here from single clip to individual clip it now actually shows you export Alpha. What I also like to change here is go straight. And now you can just add this to your render queue, render. So if I look into my files, I put this into download. I didn't give it a name. It's this one, untitled. Don't be worried. The Apple device cannot show this video. No problem. Let's bring this into DaVinci Resolve. So we go in here, import media, add this media. If we bring in the same clip to DaVinci Resolve, you can see I can play this. It's coming in so let's move this into the timeline and now stop hiding the background and you see it is working in this video i will show you a simple way how you can do the vertigo zoom effect in davinci resolve for the ipad so we go to davinci resolve here and i have a drone shot so how it works is you have a drone shot that is moving forward and what we do is we now do digitally do a zoom and the cool thing about DaVinci Resolve is that this zoom we can now actually do it very simple with dynamic zoom so if you don't have the dynamic zoom you would just go in here into the inspector and you would actually say at the beginning you would say you start somewhere around like let's say just on purpose do it here set a keyframe and then in the end go back to where it was just this opposite movement so one camera moves there and the zoom is moving out is actually creating the zoom in effect so if we now hit play you see now that it's already making the same movement but i show you a faster way how you can do this so let's reset all of this we have an option here in the inspector that is called dynamic zoom if you click this one and you activate this and you go now here to the settings you have now here a setting the third icon and this is the two boxes here the green box is your starting point 
the red box is your ending point. So you don't have to set any keyframes anymore. We could just say, for example, okay, I want to start, let's say here, um, let's go more in here, let's say here, and the red box should finish here. Let's, let's look how it looks. We hit play and boom, you have your vertigo zoom effect. And to make everything a little bit more smooth, you can also right click here and then say, for example, ease in and out. So that means that we have a more dynamic flow from the beginning and in the end, and it just will look more smoother. So if we hit play, and this is a very simple way how you can use the dynamic zoom to create the vertigo zoom effect. So this was part number two of my top 10 series. If you want to see the next one, that will be another one. I will link this one here. And the old one, if you haven't seen the first one, part one, that one will be here. And we'll see us in the next video. If you want to learn more about DaVinci Resolve, definitely check out the masterclass that I created, DaVinci Resolve from beginner to pro, this is the iPad version. Check out the link here in the description. I'm Daniel and we see us in the next video. Bye.